come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, a uh, book club for movies, as it's been described. It's not not really a movie. We have an actual book here tonight. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of hitting all all of them tonight. We have a book, movie. That's not bad. That's not a bad way to start. Uh, If you're just joining us, thank you very much for listening. And uh, if you're returning, thank you for listening. We hope that you'll go the extra step and give us a star rating or a thumbs up or a like on uh, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, or wherever you found us. And you can also get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can follow us on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can find us on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. We love to hear what you have to say to us. That we uh, do. And we will read some of your comments later. <laughs> yes. Some of them. I'm, Not all of them. Most of them. Most, most of them. them. On our Igor's mailbag Some segment just of our show. discussions, but yes. whatever. So these are the internet radio superstars. Michaela. Sean. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Holly. Holly. See, I remember because she's sitting there. <laughs> Me. <laughs> what did we watch tonight? Tonight we watched Pet Cemetery. The From movie the year that fucked up my spine of cemetery for the rest of my life. <laughs> It did, yeah, Same. mine too. Yeah. Same here. I'm just like, wait, I have to think how about do you it. Spell yeah. It? yeah. Ah, yeah. C. It's always a C. Is there a reason why it's spelled that way? Uh, it's the way it's, a kid would spell kid it. Kid would spell it, yeah. yeah. It's a kid spelling because it. Okay. At, the, at the very beginning, they show the pet cemetery. It's obviously like a, a man made sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clearly yeah. painted by a child. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. There should be some backwards letters in there then. Yeah, like the R. <laughs> yeah, the R should be why backwards. Why is it always the R? Well, well, yeah. Why can't it be the A? Oh, Sean. (laughs) See, that's a joke for you people, because if you look at a capital A, it don't matter. That's great, buddy. That's funny. Uh, Or T. Wit. Wit. That's the... That's what you you, you get. Different different levels of wit. Oh, only the best. Depending on the night. Only the best? All right. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, Already off the rails. Yeah. So, what are we talking about? <laughs> uh, Pet Cemetery. The directed novel. by who? I interrupt you. I'm sorry. Oh, oh yeah. Pet sorry. Cemetery, 1989, directed by um, Mary Lambert. Mary Lambert. Mm-hmm. Who Mary you Lambert. know from? Pet Cemetery Two. <laughs> Ooh. And and Halloween Town Two, Calabar's Revenge. There yes. it is. And, and Megasaurus Virgus's Gatoroid, or what's it that's called? Did she? It's one of those. Yeah. 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 <laughs> her her uh, career did not go well. Apparently. Yeah, because she, she also did um, uh, part three of the. Uh, Urban, Urban Legends, Legends. Bloody did. Mary, oh. but yeah. she directed, the worst movie. She directed a shit ton of music videos from the eighties. So many. Yeah. She has TV now. Too. She, so yeah, she has many. A lot of TV. Madonna. She, Madonna. Like Madonna. Madonna. Janet Jackson. And, uh, like, Bobby Brown. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. Prayer, which is one like of my prayer? favorite music on, videos ever. Yeah. I love that music video. Living on a prayer. No, that's like a bon prayer. Jovi. That's yeah. Bon Jovi. Jesus, yeah. Colin. Like a prayer. You should know. It's like a prayer. Like a prayer. Yeah. With the burning crosses behind. Yeah, yeah. The one that was. Yeah, I remember the. Yeah. To play mm-hmm. during the Super Bowl or something, and there's a lot of people complaining about it. There's a lot of people that. complaining about it. I don't know if it played during the Super Bowl. Yeah, that was hers. That was before my consciousness. Yeah. I was pretty young then. I remember people complaining about it. I saw Pet Cemetery when I was 15 years old. I figured it out. 15 in the theater. 15 wow. in the theater. Nice. 10 at home. Opening weekend. Did you know anything about the plot of this movie before when you saw it? It's 10 no. years old. No, no, no. Tender age of 10. No. I just knew a kid got. I I, th- I saw it when I was like twelve on cable TV, and I saw whatever the cable TV description of it was. That was my mm-hmm. knowledge going into it. Yeah, very young when I saw it, and en- young enough that I did not remember this movie like at all. Watching it tonight, you haven't seen it since you were ten years yep, old. Yep, it's just one of those things. I never got around to watching it again, and the older I got, the less I remembered about it, mm-hmm. and then. Got but you remembered tonight. Zelda as soon as we saw it, because no one as, can forget as Zelda. As soon as Zelda's on the fucking screen, my heart just like stopped, mm-hmm. and I was 10 years old again, and I was mm-hmm. terrified. <laughs> You're like, that's that movie. Yeah. Yep. Oh, my God. Like, I was like, oh, I remember her. And then when she shot up out of bed, I was like, fuck, mm-hmm. yes, this I'm movie's terrifying. I'm coming for you, Rachel. Oh, mm-hmm. God. And this time... <laughs> I'll get you. <laughs> that's that's what everyone remembers from yes. this movie. Yeah. Yes. 
that is a nightmarish, freakish image in a movie that's full of nightmarish, oh. freakish mm-hmm. image. Yeah. A movie you should not watch at 10 or 12 no. or 15. No. Maybe 15 is better, I but 10 is not. No. I think we've all established that most of us watched inappropriate things at yeah. the young age of yes, 10 yep. or 11, whatever it was. Yes, we did. I'm sure I was. Yeah. I feel like I was. Uh, I don't know. So there had to be a, a, an older person in the room. Most of my life, everybody in my family was older than me, mm-hmm. so I'm pretty sure somebody so else. So this wasn't one that you snuck downstairs and watched? Like, I'm sure well, at some point I, I was just did. like flipping through the TV and be like, hmm, all right. Because I remember just lonely afternoons in the house and just watching Pet Cemetery. Yeah, being a latchkey kid. Yeah, you just kind of watch whatever you want. That was what right. right. like, come me. home. Like, it's like, yeah. what's on TV at yeah. three in the afternoon? Yep. See, I was usually pretty alone in my horror movie watching because my, my parents do not do horror. My brother, who's older than me, Usually picked all the shows that we watched, and he hates horror movies. So this would have been like me up by myself at like two in the morning watching like USA Up All Night or something. Mm-hmm. Why does he hate horror movies? I'm always fascinated with people who hate he, horror movies. Yeah. He can't watch was them. scared of everything. As a yeah, kid. he was when we were kids. He was terrified of Ghostbusters too. And I had to like, <laughs> I was like four, and I had to tell him when parts. You were, were just over. like, look, it's Vigo. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, he's great, it's Vigo. And then he'd be like, tell me when it's over. And I'd be like, okay, it's over, and it wasn't over. I'm sorry, did you say he's younger or older than <laughs> he's you? He's two years older than older me. Older than you. And right? I wasn't scared of anything, and he was scared of everything. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So me watching horror movies, it was very rare for me. Mm-hmm. I had to play catch up growing up. Yeah. Yeah. I always well, wondered that in, that intensity that the people who are scared of horror movies must feel. Like, yeah. There's certain things I watch where I can I can feel it a little bit, but not like to see other people like physically reacting to horror movies and just being like no, or just uh, hands down won't see them. Like I, that's I, that's got to be a uh, terrifying life that they live. I'm envious of that. I, I wish, am too. I wish I could feel. I want that. some of that like, feeling. I, I w- want some of this scared that you get. <laughs> yeah, I wish I, I could like... feel scared watching these movies. I yes. can't though. Like, yeah, yeah. we've gotten a little too sophisticated. We've seen too much stuff, or we know we so. can We're desensitized. See the, the, yeah, the man behind the curtain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we've seen enough of that. That's actually yeah. what I was thinking. Like watching this tonight. The you know, I mean, I guess we're all saying that the, the, the screening was fueled by nostalgia. But uh, I remember. You know, when I saw it first, and I have like a clear recollection of like the where it was, what theater it was, and what time of day it was, and all this. And I mean, never, I was, never at night. Always, I think a gray, was, it was like a an gray afternoon, afternoon yeah. uh-huh. in the house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it might be dark when you come out, Always, but it's yeah. like gray when you go in. And I remember, well, I mean, contrasting it to tonight, it's like I was so. Uh, a, Non sophisticated that like the the whole idea of like the trucks going by at the beginning of the movie. Now you read it as like I mean why else are they doing that all the fucking time? This is foreshadowing, but yeah. you know yeah. you're less sophisticated as a younger viewer watching it. <laughs> right. Yeah, like, they'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everyone will be fine. So these things come at you and they surprise you more, you know. And you wish you could get back to that now. I yeah. guess as an older viewer, but you know you, now uh, you can spot that a million miles yeah. away. Mm-hmm. Oh, just oh like, they're doing oh. this. That's going to come back. Yeah, later. somebody's getting hit by a truck. Yeah, you don't get that. You don't get that back, Colin. I know. Yeah. yeah. I'm envious of people that can just watch horror movies at face value and not see those and things. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. And they have like it's yeah. some kind of they have imagination. I think that we've like dulled by exploring this so much. They have like I think it's they're they're afraid of their imagination. They mm-hmm. watch these things and it gives them you know nightmares and dreams and that they you know can. You can't go home at night because you hear a noise and you think that there's somebody in the house with you, you know, yeah. from the movie that you watched. Like, I never just, get that. Yeah. Now know? it's just real life stuff that's fucking terrifying to me. Yeah. 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 And there's it's no flipped. escaping that. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not scared by movies, but future, the future. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's terrifying. <laughs> So Stephen King at this point in time was uh, like the biggest name in horror, maybe still is or is about to be because there's a gigantic this, resurgence yes, and interest in resurgence. Stuff. But I mean, this was at the period of time where every year there was one to two Stephen King adaptations coming out. Uh, mostly low budget things. I don't think there was a lot of like big budget. I mean, it's like from like The Shining, which was nine mm-hmm. years prior to this. Right. Mm hmm. But, I mean, they were all, like, mod- modestly budgeted things, primarily produced by the Italian producer Dino De Laurentiis. Yeah. This was not. This was, uh, I think, George Romero's producing partner. Was it Richard Rubenstein? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got yep. the rights to this in Graveyard Shift, mm-hmm. which is why those two movies feel very similar, I think, when you if you watch them back to back. Did you know that George Romero was supposed to direct this oh, yes. movie? Oh, yeah, I remember that. Mm-hmm. He was, and he was preoccupied with Monkey Shines. 
a I think previous was... freak show movie. Go check out the episode. That's right. Well, there might be an addition to our cataloging of great uh, the lineage of uh, mm. uh, a movie animals. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there's plenty of uh, plenty of stuff in this one. Look yeah. at that. Look at that cat. Does anybody else think he's going to start talking like Salem the cat just by looking at this picture? <laughs> I feel like it. Yeah. What about He's the skunk angry. in the cold open? Oh, yeah. We have he the might, skunk. Yeah. yeah a he, rat. Makes me, he makes me think of Binks from Hocus Pocus. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Binks is black, mm-hmm. though. Binks is black. That's true. But Salem was black, too. Mm-hmm. No, he was gray. Um, oh, Salem was. Yeah, Salem yeah. was black. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Don't argue no, no. with me. No, no, 90s Salem TV. Was black. Yes. <laughs> Come on. Church I think is gray. this was Mary Lambert's first movie, right? I think she did was Siesta with Ellen Barkin. After. I think it was, it was after. Was so after. was this her first movie? Mm-hmm. First film? Yeah, this I believe so, yeah. So going into her first movie, she's going in with like a ton of animal actors and uh, a child actors. She and Fred in, Gwynn. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she jumped in. <laughs> <laughs> and who knows how hard it was to wrangle Fred Gwynn. Mm-hmm. He's she, probably was, a recluse throughout this whole thing. That was her first choice. She didn't want anyone else for that character. Mm-hmm. Other than uh, Herman Fred Munster? Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a yep. wonderful choice. I'm I, I agree. Yeah. Absolutely. He's carrying the weight of this movie. I would he say is. so. For sure. I yeah. love yeah. him so His much. Judd Crandall is a great old <laughs> codger who lives mm-hmm. across the street from a pet cemetery, basically, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, just he has like a humanity about him, and there's just something kind of effortless in the way that he carries himself through these scenes. And it's like, it's just weird seeing him in a horror, like a straight mm-hmm. up horror movie at his age. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. my cousin Vinny was after this. Yep. It was, yeah, 92. And he died in 93, 93. I think. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you say Ute? Yeah. That's a you. The two <laughs> defendants. <laughs> I love that movie. It's a great joke. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean the the George Romero movie, I I'm curious if it would have been any better or worse. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know what his stuff because eventually uh, I know they had partnered up on uh, <laughs> everyone's a zombie. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it would have been more That's straightforward. They, you know, yeah. right? You're gonna right. do a zombie movie, you gotta get George Romero. Yeah, but I know those two guys were friends, they had done Creep Show together, and yeah. I know that Stephen King appeared in Night Riders and he was in Creep Show mm-hmm. too. Yeah. He was in Creep Show yeah. mm-hmm. as an actor. Mm-hmm. And they eventually got to do the dark half. I think that mm-hmm. was the consolation prize. I don't know mm-hmm. why the hell Pet Cemetery didn't work out, but I know that there is a book or a documentary coming out. Yeah, you heard about this from is something out? to something. Uh, I forgot what it was called. Nope. All right. Nope. I'll well, we live in an amazing time now where, like, all of these movies from the 1980s are people going out and writing, you know, gigantic tomes mm-hmm. and making documentaries about all the minutia of the making right. of yeah. these movies. So it's out there or it's yeah. coming soon. It's like we're trying to, to, uh, pretty much like sum up our past. It's like we're going to get it, uh, succinct and then we'll never have to go back to it again. Just like we want to find the be all end all of this stuff and then that's it. Is that the downside to it? Is that I guess is so. that the, like this is where you're this is the capper on the legacy yeah. of because I mean I guess what can you do besides they want I guess we want something more than just going back and revisiting the movie over and over again. Like I'm sure these people who make stuff like this. By the way, it's called Unearthed and Untold: The Path to Pet Cemetery. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, t- 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 uh, hour and fifteen minute documentary. It says 2015. That's out. I guess so. I remember. Uh, yeah, it looks like that. I see it on YouTube. It'll probably right. show up on a future yeah. Pet Cemetery Blu-ray. Oh shit! Hopefully. I'm gonna. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would think so. Like that would show Maybe up. Shout like, Factory will get on that. Shout Factory, yeah. Yeah. this and everything. <laughs> somebody. Yeah, that would be great. Release some nice illustrative cover art for this yeah. instead of just a picture of a cat. I Not could, that there's could anything well. wrong with that. Yeah, but. like a version of this book cover they could do. On oh there. yeah, this yeah. like I could write a whole I could write a whole book on the beauty of like 80s Stephen King novel covers. Like they are oh, yeah. they are a artifact of their time that we don't see now. And they they're are beautiful. The, they are artwork in, in and of themselves. Mm-hmm. Well, I remember seeing that particular cover for years. Now it seems yeah. that uh, you know books they every year they get reissued. It seems, I don't know if that's true. I mean, it feels like it's every. It depends year. on yeah. the publisher and it depends on yeah the when the rights expire. It's very much like how with movie rights you you make a remake to keep the rights. They release a new kind of like cover you know yeah. design as to, S- way to keep the rights. Some are very cool. I like some of the reissue covers. There's a current set out there it's got like um it pet cemetery like there's all it's all very um uh well, like newly commissioned artwork I yeah basically it's but it's all one. uh it's like gatefold like minimal minimal yeah that's yeah, what i'm like saying it's the minimalist yeah. covers and everything yeah. with just a, a bright color for like yeah. title or something like that mm-hmm. or the cross on it's like i like those those mm-hmm. i try and grab because i think they're cool covers and everything mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Well, I remember this one being like an anomaly, be, you know, because I was reading Stephen was, King. You at read the this time. book? Yes. Anybody else read this book? Nope, I have not no. read this book. Nope. It might be my next Stephen King book because mm-hmm. the stand is just too damn long right now. You got to read the stand. Though. I'm going to read the stand, but I just finished with it and I can't go into another giant Stephen King book right now. So it's <laughs> not going to happen. Have you read Carrie? No, I haven't. That's a breezy, like barely over 300 like, pages. Sh- and it's, yeah, it's a good one. I think I'm going to do Pet Cemetery next. Although, since I'm watching this tonight, I might have mm-hmm. to put it off a little longer mm-hmm. just to get it out of my head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it was an anomaly only because uh, I'm saying only because, um, like, I remember, you know, as you're following Stephen King and paying attention to the movies as they would come out, there was always, when you look in the in the book, you know, it show like other works by Stephen King, and there was mm-hmm. always this Pet Cemetery. And I'm like, what the hell is it? Because they haven't made a movie out of it yet. Right. How come they haven't made a movie out of that mm-hmm. one? Where's the movie for <laughs> Pet Cemetery? And then you get to understand like what the subject matter is, and you're like, oh, I can see why there might have been some, some hesitation in going yeah. in and make a Actually, film of this. There was hesitation in uh, in getting the book published, as it was. Because he wrote this early on, yeah, and, and he, put it in a drawer for a longest it, time. He shelved it because his friends and family were like, "No, nah, dude, this is too fucked up." Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was very, very dark. Mm-hmm. I remember. Yeah. yeah, and then eventually, because he had to pay a bill somewhere, he turned yeah. it in. Well, it's because the publishers, I think, were holding his money ransom for his book deal, mm. and so they were like, "We need two more books, otherwise, you're not getting paid." And so he gave him this. They bargain he said i'll give you this and to be just done with it so he gave this one up even though he didn't want this one published he's mm-hmm. less like it's too dark it's too the material is yeah. just like too even much for stephen he's, king, he's, stephen he's, king. He has, he's just like he has i don't want to said that this was the scariest book he's ever written yeah he's like i'll give it up to get out of this so here you go well when we talk about the scariest i mean like what is that it scared, it scared him Apparently that's not a hard the, thing to do the these days. Yeah, I was right? gonna say we gotta take Stephen King's word with a Nowadays. giant pile of salt here because that's true. Yeah. every movie he sees is the scariest movie he's ever seen. Yeah. You know, so yeah, this was like <laughs> this was years past Stephen King though. Yeah, but I can see this being. Although he did like, make Maximum Overdrive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Or yeah. not. Yep. <laughs> he made it. Yeah, he directed so, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's a, it's uh, it's very it's an unsettling subject matter. I imagine to write the novel, you have to be in the headspace. It's just, I mean, imagine it, right? That, yeah, that would suck. Well, yeah. <laughs> to be in that yeah. kind of a dark place for yeah. that long, for whatever seven hundred pages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ugh. Well, and Holly and I were talking off mic too that like this was before his you know life changing car accident where he got hit by a van. Mm-hmm. So like clearly the idea of like a loved one or someone you know being hit by a car has been something present with him for a while and then it actually happened to him so he was kind of working through his worst fear before it even happened to him yeah this story came about because the house that he was in with his family it actually did have a pet cemetery behind the house and um, he saw his daughter's cat get hit by a truck and that's what sprung the story was he actually did witness it Mm mm-hmm well, and also, have you ever heard of or read a story called The Monkey's Paw? Yeah. Yes. Familiar with this? Mm-hmm. It's like a 1902 story in which a person wishes for someone to come back from the dead. Right. And the person does, like, I think the end of the thing is, you know, they show up at the door and there's a knock. Knock at the door. And the wife goes to the door and the husband's like, he's going to be horrible. So he wishes with his last wish that, that to get rid of it. But just that idea. And I guess that's what we're talking about. Why this movie is so unsettling. Unsettling. Yeah. It's a good word. Yeah. Right. For yeah. the, this is an unsettling movie. It yes. is. Very yeah. much. <laughs> it's like, you know, because you, you're dealing with the questions of what happens with death. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's the yeah. whole idea of like death, dying, uh, a, well, violent, abrupt death. Yeah. What happens after you? What die. happens mm-hmm. after? Yeah, yeah. Because it comes, you know, they're asking some pretty tough questions here, and especially to have children around this. You know, it's like, well, can't God bring? You know, well, you know, if you really want to do, yeah, yeah, right. If I Can have faith in this enough, will it bring you know somebody back from the dead? Yeah, right. You don't want to crush a child's faith, but at the same time, do you You're want just to like, put no, that they're into dead? Their head? Yeah, you know what dead means? <laughs> Jesus, go well, away, kid. Sean's parenting good. skills coming through right now. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's, that's but isn't that what makes it difficult though? Is because there's a scene earlier where they're talking about you know they go to this pet cemetery that they find, and the little girl is like, "Well, is my cat gonna die?" You know, I don't want my cat to die. Mm-hmm. And so the dad has to basically console her at this point. You know, mm-hmm. nothing bad's going to happen. And, you know, like, you know, is there life after? And then everything bad happens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like you got to have faith that, you know, things will turn out. But then the, yeah. the counterpoint to that is the scene after the little kid dies where he has to basically go like, you know, 
I mean, what do you do? You can see it happening right there between Judd and the dad trying to explain this. So like, yeah. eh, you can have faith all you want that he's going to come back. But yeah, <laughs> you know? right. like, go ahead and do that. But yeah, yeah. that's got to be that's got to be hard. That's a tough emotional space for a little kid, I think, to deal with. I mean, tough for a parent, I imagine, to deal with. the. I mean, that's, I guess, why we're saying this is like a, a, a very unsettling. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, because then, the, then it opens the door with the mom and her experiences with death. Well, that and like fucked up. a lot of like Stephen King's stories are like a really supernatural thing or something really far out of our grasp that mm-hmm. takes a lot of imagination to get to that point. Right. Whereas this, like the premise from the get go is like someone close to you dies in it's, a tragic accident. Like, yeah. great. That could happen to any of us and probably has happened to yeah. a lot of us. Like, so it's basic human emotion. Right, right. Yeah. So it's a lot more grounded or at least it starts off more grounded right. than a lot more of his other stories do. So Stephen King wrote the screenplay to this movie, he did. which I is also about that. kind of significant. So, but this is where I guess, as as what you just said, as a springboard, he does bring in a a lot of like various supernatural phenomena mm-hmm. into the movie. Does mm-hmm. this work in the movie's favor or against it, or the story's favor, I guess, or against it? Because I mean, what's the catalog of stuff you've got? A little girl who apparently has a psychic ability. She has The Shining. <laughs> yes, she does. <laughs> she has to because all Stephen King things take place in the same universe. Like, Derry's mentioned in everything. You know, mm-hmm. characters are always interacting with characters from other stories. Like, mm-hmm. it's not a huge leap to make to think that she has some sort of, like, mild Shining ability, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's easier, it's easier to think that because people come back from the dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Mild well, Shining ability. Yeah. Like, this is what I'm saying. Like, if the, if, if the central concept is strong enough. That was a future affliction. It's like, do you have the shine? Yeah, my little bit. It flares up every now and again. Mild, shining, it's mild. Okay. I'm taking high, medication. You have high functioning shining. Don't She's like worry. no Danny Torrance level like right. shiner. But you by know. the way, look out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. I forgot. What <laughs> sorry. Oh, yeah. sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Well, okay. So if the if the central concept is strong enough and and i think that it is mm-hmm. the idea of you know someone dying and dealing with that and if you had an opportunity to bring them back from the dead would you take it mm-hmm. what would that be like okay yeah. so on top of that we're mm-hmm. adding the layer of uh, a psychic child yeah so for so what is which isn't too well, far out there because child. it's not like we're seeing visions no, but she is. She, well, I, but we're not seeing her visions. Like, it's not I going think, into some yeah. weirness of that. I, I feel it like, feels almost like she's having more feelings. And right. yeah, she and is I, having dreams. But. And I feel like it works just because you you do hear about people that have traumatizing situations and they start having very in touch dreams. So it actually makes sense. It's not super far fetched. Like, it doesn't have to be completely perceived as supernatural. It can just be a weird. Um, like a weird insight because like I said, people do have these these unusual psychological situations when they go through a trauma. And it's not so played it's not and it's not played as being overtly supernatural. Right, yeah. Well it's played as it if you didn't have Ellie's vision or you know, dreams, mm-hmm. you wouldn't have the the tragedy of the finale, right? Is that the reason that Ellie has dreams plot wise? If you just, if you dissect it, break it down, like why does she have the, what, like what relevance does it have to anything that happens in the movie? It's because she dreams that something bad's happening at home. And therefore, mm-hmm. Tasha Yar has to make the cross country trip, which we're like, no, don't go there. And so yeah. you're just kind of feeling this horrible thing mm-hmm. approaching. Yeah. 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 I, I, that kind of seems to be the only purpose of it, definitely. Like to just sit, put her on the path to go home. Mm-hmm. So all of that psychic, but just to get like some, like, how do we get her to go back? Like, she really has to need and want to leave tonight, leave Chicago and go back to right. Maine. I don't know necessarily that a child's dream would make someone do that, but I'm also surprised that this guy, the Lewis Creed, former Elvis and me, right? Amy? Amy? Yeah. Uh, he, uh, I think Sounds that's all familiar. I've ever seen Dale Midkiff in. I mean, that, yeah. The, it was like a two part yeah. TV movie. Um, but he's a doctor and his daughter has a spot on, like, I dreamed that you and Judd, you know, buried, uh, the church in the pet cemetery. Mm -hmm. He's like, I just did that. 
like mm-hmm. last night. And holy shit, how do you know that? Yeah. But he's like too guilt ridden. He's like, oh, no, church is fine. I don't know what you're talking about. He, you know, and just breezes over this. Like, I would have questions. This yeah. would be on my mind. Like, be like, hey, <laughs> well, I, yeah. Lewis Creed is not a man who asks questions, Colin. No, no matter what is going that, on. Yeah. This, he seems like a simple man. <laughs> yeah. No matter, no matter what his neighbors tell him to do without explanation, he has no. He's questions. just like, yeah, sure. He's what a yes man. Have? What did we do, yeah. Judd? <laughs> Follows the old dude over. Mind. Well, a man's heart is yeah. stone It's like, what the fuck are you talking about, old man? What did we do? It Why are we see- burying him up here? Well, I have my reasons, and that's as that's far it. as you go. That's it. It kind of seems like he's done that like bullshit self improvement New Year's re- resolution to just say yes to everything. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like he's on that yeah. kind of path. Like, I just like, sure I'll say yes right. to whatever is put in front of me. Yeah. He's an opportunity man. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll hike for five miles and bury a cat. That's fine. I don't. Yeah. This seems normal. Yeah, it's just like he's folk. got a zombie cat, like living in his house. Well, I mean, we're, zombie cat only because the film version of this story chooses to have the cat's eyes glow mm-hmm. uh, throughout the entire thing, which like is like something yeah. is possessing it that's not. He's a little soul. roughed up too, you know. Yeah, yeah but they take him to he's... the cleaners, and then he looks okay. They also the audio track. The, I the, take him to the cleaners. <laughs> <laughs> that we do. You take him up and you dry clean my cat, him. please. Yeah. <laughs> it's just kind of meow. Not much starts. Just hung up by the yeah. scruff. Well, we were right around the arms. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. It's just hanging like this. Yeah. yeah. But wow. he doesn't seem to have any kind of existential crisis over this. I the guess cat or Lewis? Lewis. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The cat. the cat. Actually, I would argue the cat is having more of an existential I mean, crisis probably. than Lewis yeah. is in this movie. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> The cat was run. The cat was run over by a truck, and apparently its neck was broken. Do you heal up when you are resurrected in the Micmac Pet Cemetery? Yeah, apparently. it looks like it because, like, when you know Gage gets healed up, he has like a line on his face, yeah, and he got line. hit by a truck. He, yeah. you know, I feel like yeah. if you broke your neck, you should have that thing where you're just walking yeah. around and you have to keep pulling your head up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God, that'd be great. Uh, and he keeps oh, falling God, over. Yes. What movie is that? Where the guy's dead? Or oh, maybe it's uh, Death Becomes Her or something. Doesn't her neck? Does yeah. he break her neck? Yeah. And she's yeah. got to keep pulling it up. That's yeah. what it is. <laughs> yeah, it feels like it'd be more a Death Becomes Her thing. Like if your neck was broken, it's broken. Yeah, you got to fix that shit. I feel like that was another movie too. I feel like and it I was too, but it's I can't. A guy. Either. I'm, I'm yeah. seeing a guy. Yeah, yeah. it's not. Uh, what movie was that? Uh, uh, Hocus Pocus Billy came no. to hit my mind, but that doesn't seem like it's right. Something like that. Oh, but we digress. This is gonna bug me now. Sorry. Well, there's also a supernatural, like the second supernatural uh, layer. Is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, uh, is black. it uh, Vincent D'Onofrio? Or yeah. is, is everything's kind of okay? Yeah. That, that seems about right. That's yeah. what it is. Okay. Sorry. Continue. Sorry. Random outbursts. Continue. Uh, there's a, a ghost. Oh, yes. Named Victor Pascal. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Who's a cheerful fellow. Pascal. With half of his brain hanging out. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because we got to have a gore quotient in our horror movie. Yep. Yes. What is he? Okay, so I mean, he is in the novel as well, and he is basically the Cassandra, right? Who's the warning of uh, He's the yeah. ghost of Christmas present and future? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> and past and my, and midday and, lunch. <laughs> what function does he serve to the movie? The story. Well, what, is, what he, know, tries, like what he <laughs> tries to serve. He's, yeah. Don't first. fucking use the the cemetery. That's yeah. what he's trying right. to say. He's, in the movie, I don't know what it is in the book, but in the movie, I'm just like, why are you telling him this? Like yeah. nobody's gonna. Yeah. He wouldn't have he even known about like, this. Okay, well, Judd would have showed it to him anyway. Sure, but yeah. before that, it's just like, by the way, not that you ever would, but don't look in that room. And then he just it's walks off. Yeah. It's wife, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 It's like don't do that. It's like telling a kid, "Hey, don't don't look in this. Don't open this." Yeah. And then, what, of course, yeah. what are they going to do? They're yeah. going to look in it's it or like, open don't it. Don't push you know? the red button. Yeah, right. Yeah. Did you but notice space in the movie, and... like, because uh, when when Judd's like, "Bro, the place we're going is over there." <laughs> That's my <laughs> uh, that there's no kind of like there's no reaction from Lewis as far as like you no know. there's no reaction from him ever in this movie because well, he's he, not no, a great actor he does have <laughs> one, like one the, at flash the table when uh, when Judd says the heart of a uh, man's heart is stony he's yeah. like oh my god I was told this by a dead a dying man yes. yeah. like a day ago or whatever yeah. like. Well, it's too late now, damn it. Like, you've already gone and buried this cat mm-hmm. up in this Jesus. pet cemetery. Mm-hmm. God damn it. Did you guys Judd. notice the rabies poster when Pascal was brought into the high school slash clinic? Oh, <laughs> we could not determine what it was because it looked like a high school at first. Yeah. There was a rabies poster that had Cujo on it. Oh, did it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Nice. It's nice. in that first oh, hallway yeah. where we were like, is that a high school? And then we were like, yeah. wait, where are they? Yeah, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Stephen King. It's like, in the high school uh, part of it. Universe. Mm-hmm. Kinda. Yeah. It should be Stephen yeah. King High School. That's what it should yeah. be. Yeah. No need. He shows yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, sure, don't, sure. don't worry. Up. He does make a cameo. As a reverend, which is kind of funny. Yeah. He always. They seem kind of funny, his cameos. He does it in. What's the cat movie? Cat's Eye. No, the other one. Isn't he in Sleepwalkers? He has Sleepwalkers? more than two cat movies. Sleepwalkers. He's in Sleepwalkers where he does this thing where he has to talk to the sheriff. It's a weird cameo. <gasps> That's right. Yeah, he is weird, in Sleepwalkers. He's in Sleepwalkers. It's a very weird cameo. He's just like, I want to talk to you about this. And he's like, talk to the sheriff. And then he just walks to the sheriff. Sheriff? I wanna, it's <laughs> really weird. Like, he's got a story he wants to tell, but nobody wants to listen to him. Yeah. It's very weird. He's like Stephen King but cameo funny. man. Basically, yes. Yeah, and a lot mm-hmm. of stuff. Yeah. Right? Uh, well, uh, his, I mean, his movies in well this one I think was filmed we were talking in his neck of the woods yeah, in, yeah so on location seen. in Maine mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so it's an official like Maine landscape and territory there mm-hmm. probably the house that inspired that no I don't know that's going too far but <laughs> no that's a different house that yeah. house actually is currently up for sale right now the house that was that inspired Pet Cemetery is, is on oh sale the one right that inspired it yeah not the movie that house. one is still there you can go see it yeah but it's not for sale road trip yeah. yeah, we should do, do that. It. And then I'm hit. sure whatever uh, Sean Clark all the and the main. horrors how right. yeah. grounds is already. Well, we can out. hit that, and then we go down to the Myers house in like Georgia. Yeah, and then we should go to Texas to like eat at the, uh, the barbecue the barbecue, barbecue place. place the, the Texas Chainsaw we can Master go to the Exorcist um, apartment in South Carolina. There we go. I think we should just do the horror movie road trip. We mm-hmm. end up in Pasadena at the Myers house, <laughs> wow. and and we can go to the Freddy Krueger house too. The we Nightmare pod- House, right? We do podcasts from each one. There you go. There you go. I love it. Summer. Road Nobody's road. done this yet. Yeah. yeah. The Saturday Night Road Show. There you go. I love wow. it. Yep. This no. This needs to be a TV show. Yeah. We we expand into TV. It's the Saturday Travel Night Network. Road show. Pick us up. <laughs> Saturday Night Freak Show Road Show. I, uh, I don't know. They've got that Rob Lowe show right now. They'll probably get higher ratings yeah. than us. Coming to you on YouTube Red. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Okay. As long as somebody pays me to do it. I don't need to make money. I just want someone to pay for it to happen. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah, there you go. I, need. I, I agree. Coming soon to GoFundMe oh, or Indiegogo. Yeah. People, people want to see that. We can yeah. do that. I'm that'd sure you do. It. Don't you? Listener, you want to see us on the road <laughs> going to these famous horror right. houses. You want and... us to experience things, <laughs> not you, right? Right. That's how this right? works. <laughs> that's, what you, that's what GoFundMe and Kickstarter's for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So you can vicariously live through us? This sounds great. Yeah. I'm all for it. Yeah. All right. I mean, Same there you go. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Coming okay. soon. Glad we settled that. It's not going to happen. Uh, okay. You're such third, a third, <laughs> God third, damn it. What are you talking about? That was as hopeful as uh, I can muster. Colin, you know we need your van, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're not, this can't well, I kind of figured. It's going to happen without you. Yeah. Oh. It's got a power jack in there. We can, like, you know. We, no, we tried that. Yeah, we can't podcast yeah. from the van. It's not. Mm-hmm. That's a not very helpful. Converter or a booster or something. No. Um, so there's also <laughs> a third supernatural entity, and this is the one. Wait, that, what was the second? Uh, ghost. Oh, the ghost. Yeah, the dude. Mm-hmm. The ghost. Pascal, Victor. Mm-hmm. A third it was supernatural a jug. entity. Yeah, right when he got hit by, he got hit by one of them truck. goddamn trucks that yeah. go through. It's a it, fucking like, epidemic in this town. People getting hit by yeah. these trucks. Like, goddamn like wrong. people should not live here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> people should not live here. Can you do it again? <laughs> no, I can't. I can't do it on. Yeah, yeah, I can't do it on command. That's well, not a thing. Surprise me with it again <laughs> right. before it's over. Okay. <laughs> the third supernatural element. Do we know what this is? There a return fucking cat. I don't know. No, well, the, the, the Zelda. Power, the power. <laughs> the power. The power which announces itself in a big blue light. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Right. And that apparently caused Mimsy, whatever the hell her name is, to hang herself. True or false? Missy. 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 It didn't cause her. She has cancer. She was just in a lot of pain, man. Yeah. She doesn't know if she has cancer. She says, "I'm sure I have cancer." Was the power trying to get somebody to die so they could be buried in the pet cemetery? No. That doesn't Why seem necessary. What, right. Why is that? Because there are already a shit ton of people I, dying. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, help me out. What, what I, don't, I don't what know. Is yeah. <laughs> what is the point? <laughs> to make Jed a lonely old, Judd a lonely old man to so he out hangs out with the neighbors kids? all the time? Wait, like, did, she didn't. She, no, she didn't die first. Pascal died first, right? Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. he was like the first thing yeah. really to happen. Yeah. So yeah, it's then freak she out. hangs herself. And there's a ten year old me watching this fucking movie. <laughs> it is. That was fucking. 
Yeah. You see someone walk up a table, and then first of all, you just see their feet go. <laughs> Yeah, well, and then you see her hanging there. Well, that, like, yeah. It's a shitty image to see as a 10-year-old. Well, and that, that's the thing. I think that her death was, the whole point of her death was to open up the topic of discussion of death with the child. She didn't know the kid that got hit by the truck or, does that, yeah, he got by a truck, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this was the, the discussion that needed to happen to open up that whole world for her. I pose to you that you have that opening with church. You kill church, they have to talk about death with the child. You solve the yeah. you solve that problem. That's a good point. I say this whole movie could be solved by putting a fucking privacy <laughs> fence around your yard and you don't have this problem at all. But <laughs> Or just being like, fuck off, old man. Yeah. Yeah. Leave your cat Go back to your get, yard. Leave the cat in the house. Yeah, just don't, don't want the, the cat, cat outside, outside and you don't yeah. have that problem either. Yeah. Yeah. Millions of people do it yeah. all the time, yeah. not letting their cats outside. Or be a better dad and you watch horrible, your kid. You horrible, horrible people. <laughs> Invisible fence. What's it called? Mm. Is it called invisible yeah, fence? Yeah, it is. Fence. Yeah. Yeah, you're just, just like. Put that up. Yeah. There, there are multiple solutions to prevent this from happening. Yeah. yeah. I mean, 1989. They right? had People plenty just... of warnings with yeah. all of this shit. Yeah. Plenty. It's, it's almost like Judd predicted the cat would do that. He literally said, if your cat goes across this road too many times, his luck is going to run out. Yeah. He literally said, keep your damn cat inside. You see his, face? <laughs> his face when he went over to like yeah. see like if that was actually her cat, yeah. he was just like, I'm so done. I warned you yeah. how many fucking times about this cat. Oh, and how many people it. do you think have lived in that house he's had that same conversation with? Like Enough to fill that fucking graveyard. Exactly. I think so. I think, well, they didn't all live in that house. I think they did. did. This is I my thought. They is that they because all did. That's the yeah. path. It yes. comes off of that house. Yes, I think they I mean, all seriously. did because there's nobody living around this neighborhood. The townspeople are all going to travel to this tiny little Fuck pet that. cemetery in the middle of bumfuck no, nowhere. No, they all lived in that house. They bury their pets it. in their backyard. The evidence to support your claim, Sean, that no one lives in this house or lives in this town, is that when Judd's house goes on fire at the end, apparently it burns for like for the, I don't know, like it, ten hours. It burns down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Those trucks drive right by it, and mm-hmm. no fire brigade is no. ever summoned. No, yeah. it would take a while. Yeah. So I also it, imagine, I'm just getting back to like the fact that Church gets hit by a truck. I imagine that uh, Judd is one. He just grabs the cat. He's standing by the road and he just tosses it into a truck. <laughs> like, I imagine this is something he would do. Well, He's this, like taking it upon himself to be like cleanup crew of the roadkill. All right. Just like, he, I'd say he killed the cat just so he could further this whole thing. Because right. oh, I got you. That's what my is thought. his motivation? Jesus. Yeah. It's like well, I'm. I'm a, what? Uh, yeah. It feels like he's groundskeeper of the pet cemetery, right? Like yeah. it feels like his job is to just like maintain it. Yeah. Let's it just say like at, at no point does he around who remembers that it's there. Right? Yeah. Uh, let me let us say that at no point does he feel malevolent in the, in his actions. No, he's doing all. this on purpose. This is just my theory yeah. and my thought, which I think would be funny <laughs> if he was throwing cats into trucks. <laughs> That's just horrible. To it is horrible. Somebody to the pet cemetery. Why yeah. does he do Maybe it? He's compelled to do it, living that close to it for so is long. Is he compelled because of the power of the, the power? Because that's what he basically says later on. He thinks that he may it may have caused him to murder your child, Lewis. Yeah. yeah. There's no other motivation as to why he would do this. Like, what do you want from this, Judd, that you're taking him to bury his cat up into the Indian burial ground? Because he knew what was going to happen. Right. Well, I mean, he's the had- theory of what's going to happen. He knows. Yeah. He knows that what comes back from that place, that the Indians stopped using it because it was sour. The yeah. land was sour. Everyone keeps saying the land is sour. So why is he doing it? Okay. So I'm a foolish old man. That in the book, it's been so long since I've read it, so I don't remember. Let's this. read it now. Uh, okay, we're just going to read random quotes. Yeah, everyone gets one um, chapter. But he looked like he was lying. <laughs> I just remember, uh, darling. Pull an Andy Kaufman it said, and just I think read it's the very whole last. podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, what did you say? What was the last? Darling, it said. Oh, yeah. Oh. Um, I think I said that it ends in Stephen King. Um, uh, in the movie. Okay, so this is where I wonder if the directorial. Uh, uh, direct the direction, the right? directorial directing, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> is it good or a bad? Okay, so what we know about like the people and things that return from the pet cemetery is that they're fucking flat out evil, evil things. Yes. Church comes back, he's hissing all over the place. Spot comes back, he's a snarling evil fucking dog. Timmy Baderman comes back and is like a, a retarded zombie. zombie. <laughs> He's right? basically Frankenstein to that village. Like he yeah. has the line from Bride of Frankenstein about the uh, yeah. hate living 
Love dead. I mean, he basically mm-hmm. says that. Yeah, he does. Yeah. That's what I heard. I'd never heard that before. I'm <laughs> I didn't catch that part. Yeah. I did. It's I heard the I heard the love the dead part. Yeah. Fire. I'm just yeah. like, that's got to be what he said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I put it to you that in the book or a different style of directing, mm-hmm. maybe instead of going for the, we're going to crank the horror elements up to 11 because mm-hmm. it's a horror movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You dial that shit back and like people come back and they're not. Like disgustingly ferocious and feral, right? Cat but, comes back right. and it's like, oh my god, the cat's back, you know? But they're not right, right? But they're just not right. Yeah, yeah, not as horrid as they would seem. Because you would think like something would, something would be known about this. Like if they, I mean, I guess it was at the, what did they say the end of World War Two that the son got he took his son and buried him up there and he came back. So yeah. maybe stuff like that gets lost to history. And there's it being so early, there's not. Really, a great way for that story to get around, besides the people. Well, so, there's an implication or an inference that Timmy Baderman becomes like a child murderer because he's trying to bury like a kid's leg in outside of his house. I don't remember. Again, I need this is where we need clarification from the book, but oh. I don't remember why it was that the townspeople decide like we got to kill this evil, you know, guy. Not just that, they have to burn down the house. Yeah, that's what you did. In the day, it feels like just like ah, we have no other way to deal with this. Burn it down. We don't understand you. Kill it with fire. Yeah, I, that yeah, really pretty much. Yeah, it works. Yeah. It, that's what it should say. This is like the 1940s. Kill it with fire. That yeah. should be the theme of the decade. Yeah. Well, what did I mean? I just throwing that out there. Do you think like how would the movie have played if you turned those like the, you know super horror moment, you know, where we're just going to go make up effects and there's a guy comes back from the dead. He's got to be a zombie wandering around, like staggering, you know, if you turned it, you know, and just dialed it down. So they were mm-hmm. just off. If, you know, the cat didn't have glowing eyes, it was just the fact that it's an undead cat, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Or maybe it was, it does seem to it's, share it's like gotta a lead consciousness. To something. Hey. <laughs> you turn it you got to turn it down but i feel like it's it's just a it feels like it'd have to be a slower ramp up than what we get because at a certain point they do just decide to be like all right shh. and you know we're full into shit going wrong dead yeah. cats and children and wives and whatnot that does kind of go well, I guess real high i'm just asking because like if if everything if all the evidence that we've seen says that all these creatures come back and immediately try to kill, you know, something or someone. Why the fuck would old man Judd say, hmm, your daughter's cat's dead. I don't want you to have to live with that. Let's bring the cat back to life. If you know yeah, that the cat is not only, like, possessed by some kind of, well, it's evil, but it's, like, evil with a capital E, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just get her a new cat. Yeah, it's eyes you know. glow with the devil. Just be honest with her. Be like, your cat got hit by a car. Here's a new cat. Yeah. Solves a lot of problems. His motivation, if knowing those things, doesn't completely make sense in that regard. Yeah. Maybe there is room for a remake after all. I was going into this going like, no, no, no. Fucking leave goddamn movies alone. I still actually think that. Never mind. I'm taking it back. (laughs) (laughs) Does it bum you guys out to know that Bruce Campbell was like number one in line for Lewis Creed? They really want want a Bruce Campbell to play Lewis Creed. Oh, yeah? And like, honestly, watching this, like, like, this is the first time I'd ever heard that right before we watched it now. Mm -hmm. And like watching the whole movie thinking, oh, that could have been Bruce Campbell. Like, I was like, God, this guy sucks. Like, that was my thought. Like, Like, I really. Really Just w- imagine how animated I would have been so been. good. It would have been yeah. so good with Bruce Campbell. I know. Can uh, Bruce Campbell play straight characters? Yeah. I've seen. He was on an X Files episode where he convinced me. I'm like, yeah. there's yeah. dramatic Bruce Campbell. Yeah. Yeah. I was okay. going to say, I've not watched any burn notice, so I don't know. It's not straight. No. <laughs> it's not a straight character. <laughs> He's not the straight man in those. Yeah. yeah. And so even his I've Elvis seen, is like got you know. Yeah, I've yeah. never seen really anything that proves that he could do that. So, but this guy I can't was see just, him doing this in this. What movie. the end of Dark Man? Look at how. Yeah, I mean, I'm him. all right. I'm with <laughs> you in that. That ten seconds is amazing and the most dramatic I've ever seen him. Mm. But this and guy I loved was it. so bland. This guy was just so like no vanilla, feeling. forgettable. No yeah, like this guy. Like I'm not surprised he did not take off after this. No, like it almost feels like uh, the a TV movie. Yes. He's, he's a TV movie version of the leading man who should He's a daytime TV actor, is what yeah, it feels what like, feels like a like. soap actor. Yeah. Which is why he's done so much TV work. <laughs> Subsequently, still working? 
I've yeah, never he's seen still this working. man before. He's still in, working. He's b- uh, doing before or after in my life. He's doing small parts. I don't think things. I would recognize him even if I did. No, like, well, I know like you would. I know you wouldn't because oh, yeah. both him and the wife were in Dexter. Yep. Don't. Nope. Yep. <laughs> nope. Definitely <laughs> didn't. Yep. They both had small parts in Dexter. Oh shit! Oh. Now I gotta look this up. Well, the <laughs> now wife I'm curious. is famous. God damn it! She was in Deep or uh, uh, Next Generation. She was tough. Oh yeah. Yes. 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 That's Sir right. Starship Enterprise. That's <laughs> right. She's I also about Bing that. Crosby's like niece. Oh, that's not so much. I the, think the his, Star Trek was more. His nephew point. dies in yeah, the original Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah. Bruce Campbell wasn't a big enough star, I assume, at this time. That's why we cast. Uh, Have they not Elvis? seen Maniac Cop? Hello. <laughs> I don't know. Was that I, the same year? That was a year before this. Yeah, oh. I didn't get a backstory. I just said that no, like that, they, they really wanted that's him. That's who they wanted. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why they hmm. didn't get him. Hmm. Intriguing. Yeah. He's like, I just did Maniac Cop. I can't do this shit. Is <laughs> Dale Midkiff? You're saying he's not a good actor because of his line delivery, or because because I thought like toward the end, and I'm toward like, this is why gets... this guy got hired. Yes, because he is convincingly, you know, broken hearted. Yes. Yeah, losing his the, it's that's scared, and frightened. At the and, end, yeah. it was good, but throughout the movie, there was no face acting whatsoever. I just looked None. up his Dexter credit. Still don't know who he was in Dexter. Yeah. I'm like, I, I don't. Small yeah, part, nope, man. don't know. Really small part. <laughs> I bet he uh, he auditioned with the later half of this movie. I Rather here. than the first oh, half, I'm sure. I would say, Probably, and that's why yeah. you'd hire him because he—I I like him in the second half of this movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's I think he does it very half. well because he is a man verging on insanity, and I believe that because he's just—he's got that kind of like off in the distance stare and that smile, like yeah, it'll be fine. I just, <laughs> yeah. it'll be all right. She just, but imagine again. she hasn't been dead that long. We'll but good. imagine Bruce Campbell doing that. Uh, I can't do it. it, I can't it, imagine it. Oh, see, I can't. I can. It's it. It looks like a great movie in my mind. Like <laughs> I just want to see it so bad. So I've seen like I've seen serious Bruce Campbell, but I wonder if like crazy Bruce Campbell brings you closer to Evil Dead. Yeah. If yeah. like I'm losing I'm my just, mind. I'm just, just I'm like, fine with I did that. An Evil Dead. <laughs> I have no like, problem yeah. with that. I'm just that. trying to wrap my head around because we know that George, George Romero was first tied to this, but then after that, Tom Savini was also tied to this as and, director. Yeah, I can't imagine. Because he didn't direct until the next year. He did Night of the Living the Dead. Dead. The right. Remake. Yeah. Okay. But he, yeah, he was. He turned this down. But can you imagine? Turned how, it down. Turned it down. Can you imagine how different it would be if it was Tom Savini and Bruce Campbell? Yeah. Totally different movie. It'd be yeah. awesome. Totally different movie. Yeah. I want to go to the parallel universe where that movie exists. <laughs> What hmm. else would change? Yeah. yeah. So many other things. Lots of blood squirting serious distance, because that's the Tom Savini thing. Yeah. Blood's got to shoot, like, yeah. eight feet. <laughs> Thank you. Right. I think he would have appreciated that uh, the pus at the end. Yeah. That, Achille- that Achilles heel hack would have had blood oh, squirting God. to the ceiling. Yeah. That reminds oh. you of, like, when horror movies had, like, decent cringeworthy gore effects. It yeah. still hurts. It, it, yeah. yeah. It yes. Does. And they hit all the, like, they hit all the spots in the body in this movie that yeah. make me hurt. It gets, it gets you in the spine, it you gets, know? You're just, like, you get the, the it's, yeah, chills, Yeah, that's where, yeah, you're just like, ugh. Yeah. What's yeah. that move? He's squirting. They get the Achilles tendon. They get the mouth. I oh, forgot about just, that uh, this time around. I forgot about uh, the mouth. I remember the kid uh, biting him. Yeah, because I remember specifically a reviewer is like, "And we have vampires in this movie too." What the hell? I'm like, did you watch it? Yeah, he's just biting <laughs> he's his just neck biting and killing him. him. Not to mention the most unsettling oh. part of this movie, which is fucking Zelda. Yeah, fuck oh Zelda. Oh my god. I have no sympathy for Zelda. But I do I do appreciate Her the being fed soup is the worst part. Oh, I do very much appreciate Wet the mouth fact sounds that, again. Um, <laughs> 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 it's not I, good. I, I love that they yeah. that they could see that a little girl playing that part just would not work. Oh, yeah, for playing as Zelda? Yeah, yeah, that's like an adult man. It's an adult man, yeah. yeah. Mary yeah. Lambert was like, no, there's no way a little girl is going to capture what we need for this. Mm-hmm. And that was genius. Yeah. Because that's terrifying. I, I'm still bothered by it. Still? Yes. Yeah. yes. So what is it that uh, gets under your... What is it about it? Like, is it the... the well, I, they well, they say she... ribs they, through, through her? Basically. Yeah. They her say spine? she... spine? <laughs> They say she has spinal meningitis, but like she looks like a fucking corpse. Like yeah. she has no she has fat. No lips. Yeah, just like skin stretched over a skeleton, basically. And she has it out for, oh, uh, what's her name? You know, Rachel. Tasha. Yes. Uh, what? she. What? No, Tasha what's her Yard? name? Yeah. Sorry. yeah okay, Rachel. <laughs> Rachel. Rachel. Yes. Rachel. Yeah. I'm gonna get you, got Rachel. Those fingers. Yeah. 
Uh-huh. Is, is, I, I mean, as much as they can do with, with makeup and effects, there is no way they could make a little girl's face that harsh. Yeah. The, There's no like, way. It had to be an, a man like that. Yeah, like the cheekbones are so harsh and the yeah. chin, like yeah, because it's literally like skin stretched mm-hmm. over bone. Yeah. Plus, it's it's almost like it is uh, it's Rachel's memory of what's going on, so it's distorted yeah. in that. So you right. get oh, everything gets a little right. more. It's a little worse. It's a little more angular. It's yep. a little more severe in what she's remembering versus maybe what actually happened. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. It's got that haziness to it, so it's just a little more horrific in that in her memory of it. And it's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It is. Creepy, especially but, that one. There's later on when she comes to the house. Was, oh, yeah. when she shoots up yeah. event when she comes towards the camera. Like, yeah. oh just, yeah, just, yeah. Just, I'm like, nope, nope. Never stop, could have been stop. again. <laughs> yeah, and that lighting from below. Yeah. It's just like, uh, no, it's a good moment. It is because like, yeah. usually horror doesn't work. I don't think like in close up. Like horror to me is more affecting when it's far away from the camera mm-hmm. and something just happens and you're like Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, there's like nothing you can do about it. Yeah. But when it's up close, like usually you can see the seams and all this. But mm-hmm. like there's just they. I think there's one time they cut back to it that I would have taken out. But otherwise, yeah. she just comes up like so fast. Yeah. And yeah. And that's like, a, right. But I think that's what's effective of it when you Absolutely. get a character who comes up like that and comes like, in yeah, frame. Get away from me. There's a there's a moment like that in a recent horror movie. There's a moment in Split that I remember with James McAvoy when he's oh, dancing, yeah. yes. which is one of the most terrifying yeah, yeah, scenes yeah. ever. Yes. And there's a moment where he comes really close to the camera because you're seeing the whole thing in a wide frame yeah. and everything, but then he ends up coming real close to you and just looking right at you. And that moment, I'm just like, woof. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. another moment of just being yeah. in close where, because mm-hmm. he's also like center frame, like Shyamalan knew what he was doing in that regard. It's yeah. like right in the center and then right in your face. Mm-hmm. Right. It feels like he takes two steps and is right there. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of like he's how looking this at works. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. a good creepy moment. Yeah. yeah, in a galaxy of creepy moments in this, it movie. really is. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of. Them. Well, they're trying for. Uh, I mean, they're shooting for the moon. There's a lot of jump scares and you know shock moments where Pascal appears. You know, like you know. A, beside a bed or whatever, yeah. you know, and then becomes comic relief later. I on love the, the I love that <laughs> he becomes too. that. I love that journey of his character. Yeah, <laughs> I'm all I, for he's it. Sitting on the yeah. plane, he's like, <laughs> oh yeah, no, that is hilarious. And he's just like sitting there waiting for the plane to go. That's yeah. like, ah, we're that's going. Hilarious. Yeah. I, th- it wouldn't have. I don't think it would have worked if he had kept showing up in a dramatic way. I don't think it would have worked. It's funny that he just starts recruiting yeah. the other parts of the family. He's like, he's not listening. So yeah, yeah. we need to go. And he's just like, all right, we're going, we're funny. traveling. <laughs> it's very funny. Even when he gets in the, uh, when he's in the truck, I'm sure everything will work out all right. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> is Bye. It, is it him who appears on the, uh, whatever, in the rock formation when, I think, uh, when Lewis is taking Gage up to no, bury him? No, it's somebody else. No, yeah, that was definitely someone else. That I because don't that know who that was like supposed to be. Lower jaw, blood, and something uh-huh. going on, and, and a bald head it looked like. It's I, some, I don't first, know who it was. At first I thought it was uh, Judd. It was yeah, so thought, quick. See, that's yeah, right. yeah. Judd or Maybe. Victor. I, who else is in the movie? Yeah. Who else is it going to be? Yeah, it's definitely yeah. not Victor. Does it feel? See, to me, I guess. Oh, sorry, on this rewatch, it feels kind of like there was. Uh, you know, it's almost like when you're making a horror film, you have to have like the the horror uh, horror action quotient or something quota, mm-hmm. where you know every you got to have something every 5 to 10 minutes to keep people you know they were you know cuz we're in the final stretch in the movie and yeah. things are amped yeah. up and all these plot points are converging we don't trust them to be tense on their own so we bump it up with the the whatever the, the head coming out of the rock formation and then yeah. what's going on when uh when uh Lewis goes over to Judd's house and it's like the house is all like decayed and shit. Yeah, there's years yeah. worth of mold and stuff. Yeah. And it's an echo chamber. That's, and there's that's wind. Gage fucking with him. He even says so. Yeah, yeah that's like, what I thought too. What's he fucking with him? Uh, like, well, I mean, why? What, no, but what? <laughs> what is he? What's he doing? Like his, what? his general presence is already fucking with him. So what's right. the point right. of the house? I don't. Being it's home? it's yeah. he's a, it's it's a demon child back from the dead. Who knows what he's thinking? Because it also, I mean, I mean, the amount of production design that has to go yeah. into to doing that. that yeah. You know, it's like how much time did they spend for this yeah. one scene that you and could cut really out good. of the movie? It, could, yeah. it did look really good, but the but the fact that the motivation is so unclear is. Why was it necessary? Yeah, it's just a small yeah. trick on his dad, and yeah. it doesn't really like. All right, we don't go back to it, and it seems like, like you said, yeah. a lot to do for mm. that 
for him very to just tiny be, part in the movie yeah he's he's playing with his dad it feels to me like there's there's something that the book tries to uh get across mm-hmm. right as to what the power of this thing is that seems to be able to reach out across you know the united states and touch people and have them all you know uh you know focused on trying to basically it wants to get into a person it lives in these you know people bury their pets but they're inarticulate it wants to be in a human body Mm -hmm. whatever it is right that is left out, you know, like it's when you make that, the, you know, the problem with Stephen King adaptations, there's stuff that he does so well in a novel when it's mm-hmm. written and you're like, oh yeah, I totally get what that is. And yeah. then you try visualizing it and you're like, I don't know what the fuck. Yeah. That, yeah. You know, it just doesn't, it's not coming across. Yeah. You know, good luck with the, uh, the turtle and the spider later on. Yeah. 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 Good luck with that. But, uh, I remember in the book, it seems to me that Judd was married and it's possible that his wife dies at some point, does not get buried in the pet cemetery, but there is some kind of idea in the novel that all dead people are somehow all share some kind of conscious mm-hmm. consciousness that the force is, is able to use to fuck with you, which is, I think in the movie, why, when Rachel gets out of the, the truck, she hears Zelda, but it's actually Gage. When she goes over mm-hmm. there, it's Zelda and uh, Gage. I mm-hmm. believe that Judd is tormented by his wife who, like, you know, I, we, I had an affair with you with so-and-so and blah, blah, blah. That he's hearing that when he's, uh, you know, when Gage is in his house. And it's like, these are all, you know, like, I don't know where that idea goes or why you would even bring it into the movie. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's not really, right. you know articulated well or executed right. well or you know you could leave it out and the thing still works yeah you got a fucking undead little kid <laughs> with an arm with a scalpel yeah running scary around enough. In here. yeah All right <laughs> that's scary enough scary enough <laughs> or is it or is it stupid no it's pretty terrifying i think uh, like that that kid is scary yeah well especially knowing it's like a real kid running yeah. around with a prop like yeah. it, it it's pretty terrifying you know yeah it turns animatronic at some points mm-hmm. i never noticed until this viewing when it's probably because Son, but when it's in yeah. the attic, yeah, when that when the it drops open and his wife comes out and he's up there, I'm like, that's an animatronic kid. Yeah, yeah. I mm-hmm. always thought it was real. I saw it this time, and for some reason, it's scarier that it's an animatronic kid. <laughs> yeah, because it's fucking creepy. <laughs> it's got this little smile on his face. He's like, ah. Did you guys like how he's like baby Dexter going through his dad's medical bag right? and then opening the scalpel that was in like a velvet lined box and pulling yeah, it I'm out? Just like, like those are little kid hands. Yeah. They got yeah. the way they shot this. I'm just yeah. like that kid is uh, very. Uh, what did that kid? Think was you going on. Yeah. Oh. Hopefully, Miko Hughes remembers. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Miko Hughes doesn't remember any of this. Yeah. I mean, Miko Hughes is to be in what? Well, he's in New Nightmare, right? Yeah. 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 Spawn. Yeah. Yeah. Spawn. And then Several many episodes other. of Full House. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Many episodes of Full House. <laughs> he's like the go-to horror kid, I think. Yeah. Like, I think you know, so for a while I, there, yeah. I yeah. think he, you know, he's uh, even at whatever the f- two years old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Had to be. You know, two or three in mm-hmm. this movie yeah. clearly yeah. is able to take direction, not look at the camera. Has, is able he's to great. Stand. He's Church. really good. He's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. really good. Yeah. But he Born never be became a like a uh, Hallie Joel Osment or anything. Like he grow, grew up and nobody cared about him. And then he ended up uh, doing the convention circuit. Yep, mm-hmm. That's where you go. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Do more. Yeah. That's I think his oldest role went. probably was like, I mean, that I remember mm-hmm. was Spawn. I mean, I don't know what happened to him after mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think new I've Nightmare. Seen I remember it mm-hmm. seems to me like that kid. I remember thinking like, fuck, this is like child abuse, what they're doing to this kid. Like, I mean, to get him to do what he's doing in that movie. It's like you're riding on the edge of like. Yeah. Hey. I wonder. If he, yeah. He's got to look at his childhood and go, Jesus. Mm-hmm. The shit they had me do. I'm three I mean, years old. And they're saying, just play dead. What's yeah. Dead? Just play dead. Just fall down here. Although I think he got up from that point. And they reversed it. Mm-hmm. When he falls in the hallway. Oh, yeah, that was definitely reversed. That, was reversed. that looked like it was like, reversed. Shit, that looked like it hurt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, okay, because like the first time I saw that, I was like, he definitely has a concussion from that. Yeah. But then, like, the but then thing. if you watch it really yeah, closely, it, it definitely up. looks reversed. Yeah. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. And you were talking about earlier, like, him holding the scalpel because there's a kid holding a scalpel in this but I think you mentioned like is he holding something real because like, he falls down it looks like well you're saying it's reversed but right, it that's like reversed. he falls down and he's carrying a scalpel right. I'm like are they giving a kid a scalpel but they also it like might be shoot rubber. those yeah. Yeah, totally. but like look at the timing of any of those shots they're mm-hmm. like three seconds at most yeah like they're, they're all, pretty quick and I'm sure that's how they shot it 
real quick stuff with him. Yeah. But he seems, seems to like, know the way he handles that thing. Yeah. Unless they're, it's like he knows the, the grip, sure. the grip he yeah, has yeah, on it. Yeah. 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 And he does like hand. So I'm saying baby Dexter, he's it. got that he's grip like, on it. He's very good. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a very good child actor. But that's what I'm saying. It's like he knows as a child, he knows that the end of this is sharp. Mm-hmm. And so you don't right. touch it on the end. And so that's how he's, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, yeah. So they gave him a sharp. Uh, it's not sharp, Colin. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm sure it's rubber or something. Although maybe. Maybe yeah. I'll watch this documentary to find yeah. out. Maybe they're just like, give him the scalpel. At the at, at best, it had to have been a, a dull. Sure. Like, yeah, like, at best. Sure yeah. It Robert, it's movie yeah. magic, right? Yeah. This is how this stuff yeah. works. Um, how many of you have seen Pet Cemetery, Cemetery 2? 2? No, I have. no. Uh, of course you Anthony, have, Sean. Anthony Edwards the, and Edward Furlong. I've seen this yeah. movie. Clancy the king Brown. of sequels. <laughs> yeah. So I've seen it. They got the original director, Mary Lambert, yeah, Mary to Lambert come back again. and do the second movie. So you're like, well, I mean, this is going to be hopefully as good as the first one. The thing that it's missing is uh, Stephen King, and the central idea is fucked for yeah. a sequel. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's the, well, it's it's the kid, Edward Furlong wants his mom back. His mom is a Hollywood actress who dies in an accident in L.A., Mm-hmm. And then the family. Oh, that's uproots. why Sean likes it. A sequel <laughs> set in L.A. <laughs> it's not, uh, not in L.A. though. But they moved to the same house. Yeah, same house. And uh, I believe uh, Illy Creed makes an appearance. I don't a, a remember. If she, I don't think so. I thought so. But I remember Clancy Brown is a cop who's yes. an asshole. Oh, he gets hit Jesus. by a car or something, and the kids have to bury him. Yeah. And he comes back from the dead. And, it's and so he's cr- back from the dead from like most of the movie trying to like, rrr, rrr, yeah, it's you know, fucking his ears off weird. Yeah. He's also got this weird mop of hair in his head that you don't really see on him and just adds to the character of him. It's just it's a fucking weird whatever he's doing in that movie. Yeah. And Anthony Edwards is in it and he's, you know, not your uh, he's like a veterinarian or something. Yeah, right? he's not a uh, leading man material or what have you in this. Like he should have just stuck to ER and that should have been it. <laughs> um, so it's not great ever for long. It's, it's a weird, like weird movie. Yeah. It's a weird movie. Yeah, I'm not. I'd go so far as to say it's a terrible movie. It's not good. Yeah. It's not good. I'm not interested. It doesn't sound good. It's not yeah. good. You can avoid Pet Cemetery 2. Yeah, well, you can probably skip I that. Will. We'll give our review right now. Skip yeah. Pet Cemetery 2. Right. There you go. Not good. So, did you guys know that uh, f- um, Fred Gwynn actually, like in real life, he had five kids and his youngest son drowned in the family pool at three years old? Yikes. Uh, uh, really? And that was 20 years before this movie was made. So, he went into this movie, like, having lived. A similar experience. That's kind of yeah, up. So yeah. It's really sad. So Ugh. maybe that's why his performance is so good because he lived it. Ugh. That's really sad. Mm-hmm. That is kind of. But I mean, I guess that uh, he's got the strength of character to be able to. I mean, that's I guess the thing that kind of makes you admire him more. That you mm-hmm. know, right? Yeah. It's sad, but he's able to still somehow keep going. You know, mm-hmm. Keep going. Yeah. 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 yeah he carries and do the weight. Do a movie, movie with that bleak. That's the thing. Like a, Liam Neeson yeah. too. Like I remember, like his wife, you know, cracked yeah. her head yeah. and died, and, and then he did terrible the gray, accident. Yeah. yeah. Which you watch the gray, and you're like. Ugh. And that was not long after. No. Yeah. yeah, that's like you're yeah. working through something right mm-hmm. there. It, yeah, you know, it's like, I'm going to fight fucking wolves to get through yeah. this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you hear a lot about... fighting death the mm-hmm. whole movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. You hear a lot about actors using movies as like a form of therapy. I just saw, sure they do. I just yeah. saw that with uh, Chris Pratt in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. He worked through his father's death because of that movie. Oh, oh. wow. Yeah. Well, that'll yeah, do yeah. it. That's, uh, that's, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. That, sure. that movie especially. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like, he really Ooh. had some therapy with that movie. No. Rooker dies. Oh. Rooker dies at the end. Michael Rooker dies. I'm sorry. Jesus Christ, Sean. Wow, spoiler alert for totally, Guardians 2. Totally can edit that? Christ. No, 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 no. Yeah, I know. Please little, do. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. Well, before that was an asshole thing to do, Sean. Before yeah. Sean goes and ruins some <laughs> other movies, yeah. we are going to come back and we are going to give you our final thoughts and review Pet Cemetery. But first, do we wait? Do we see what happens at the end? Oh yeah. Um, everyone's dead. I mean, everyone. No, <laughs> as in movies like this that they do. <laughs> Everyone dies. Yeah, everyone dies. He's, yeah, he thinks the wife should come back. She comes yeah. back again. Grabs- a man on yeah. the edge, just not on the edge. He's insane at this point. It's like it'll work this time, she which is been, why it should be Bruce Campbell. She hasn't been dead that long. <laughs> that's that's what killed me. That, that was his reasoning. She hasn't been dead that long. She'll be fine. <laughs> In the book, I remember a line where he's sitting at the uh, at the ce- at the cemetery. He's about to dig up his son's grave, and he says he actually hears his mind snap, and he was like. 
Oh, I always thought that was figurative, but I actually heard it. Oh, like wow. He hears the snap. Oh, no. Of it yeah. is. Yeah. Something like this kind huh. of fucked up. Damn. Shall we summon our mailman? I think Igor? so. I think we should. All right, Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. We'd like to remind you how you can get a hold of us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. By Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. When do you think they buried Igor in the Pet cemetery? Because it looks like... He's wearing I think overalls it's done. like Judd, so... I feel you like he, they've buried him a couple times. <laughs> like he keeps dying and people keep burying him. What do you mean? That's where he cemetery. sleeps. Is he just going back <laughs> yeah. like pull, pull the rocks over? Just Every night, yeah. right? Every night. He comes back from the dead. Sleeps. Yeah, He's the middle of the spiral, you know? I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Keep him away from any sharp objects. <laughs> oh. uh, so our first comment comes from Nick. I'm hoping I'm saying your last name right. Nick, Nick Seibel. Or Siebel? Sibyl? He says, Sibyl? finally, a podcast that reviews all my childhood movies, Night of the Creeps, Monster Squad, Trick or Treat, RoboCop. I love this podcast. You guys you are love awesome. love Colin. Yeah, I was like, I was like, I picked none of this. Yeah, either, so. yeah, yeah. I'm like, I did you pick like, a lot of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you love Colin. Oh, well, thanks anyways, though. Uh, about Pet Cemetery, Nick says, Stand By Me was an awesome film. Oh, we were asking, what was your favorite? Uh, there it is. What were your, your favorite Stephen King movies? Oh, yeah, right, right. right. Said, we can get to that in our wrap-up, so okay. we'll, we'll address that, I'm sure. He yeah. said, Stand By Me was an awesome film. John Carpenter's Christine is very underrated. Stephen King has some great film adaptations, especially in the early 80s and earlier 90s. What are your thoughts on the highly anticipated film It? Oh. Stay tuned. Stay, Stay tuned. tuned. Stay right. tuned for It. Yeah. More, more on It later. Chris Huddleston writes in. See heads. Chuds. Chuds. He says, for me, it's easily The Shining. He says, yes, Kubrick. Uh, Kubrick? Kubrick? Kubrick. Change the lot. This is embarrassing. And uh, King hates it, but it's an incredible film. I was able to watch it in a theater for the first time about a year ago and caught all kinds of things I had not previously noticed after countless viewings. I totally agree with you. You got to yeah. watch it in a theater, man. It's a different experience. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'll watch it I again. love The Shining. Fine. About our previous episode, Near Dark, Joey Adams writes in and says, it's been many years since I've seen this one and only remember small details about it. The painted car windows, the blood transfusion cowboy, Bill Paxton, and the weird looking kid are the first thing that comes to mind. So I guess, punchable kid. Punchable. <laughs> punchable kid. So I guess in the battle between this movie and the Lost Boys, I'd have to pick Lost Boys because I've seen it many times over the years. By the way, this is not Joey Lauren Adams. <laughs> yeah, 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 I saw that comment. Just making sure. <laughs> Just want to be sure. And he says uh, his favorite vampire movie is George Romero's Martin. Have you guys seen that one? Colin has. I've never seen it. I've never seen I've it. I've never seen it either. No, I've never we, seen it. We might have to have a viewing of Martin. Yeah. We do, except I don't want to keep bringing vampire movies. No, to no, I'm not show. just saying like yeah. off show. Okay, well we could do that. Yeah. We'll, well we should probably. I mean, if we all, uh, if you guys haven't seen it, we should watch it for the show. So maybe I'll bring. Yeah. yeah. I like maybe I, just like I put take, it on the list for later. I bring yeah. a lot of movies that Way I've never seen. It's, I mean, we all bring it. It's on the mental list. Yeah, just for, hold off on it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get yeah. to it. We'll get to it. Get out of vampires. Although we are getting to Halloween, so you know. <laughs> Could happen. Anything is possible. Yeah, it's very true. Uh, for our episode say. on dog soldiers, Monkey Man Bob says, <laughs> What? I'm Monkey Man Bob. I love Monkey it. Monkey Man Bob? He says, I love me some dog soldiers. I saw this when the original movie came out and went to see it and it was sold out. And I was okay. never wow. happier. That makes me so That's happy. Awesome. That means he saw it in the UK or somewhere abroad. Yeah. You, you live over there. I Monkey love Man that. Bob, are you from the UK? Could be. Tell me. Makes my heart no so happy American to know movie. there was so a sold out showing of that movie. That's right, because here it came out on the Sci Fi Channel where Movie Guru says there was definitely a large buzz about it, but, uh, you know, being on Sci Fi Channel or whatever when it came out, but it was all wasted when they didn't do a second film. Wasted? I mean, I, it, it is set up nicely for a sequel. It's a little, sh a little, a bit of a bummer they didn't do a good sequel to it, you know? I would but, say wasted, though. No, not wasted, but movie. missed opportunity. Well, we I would say. Yeah. The buzz led into the descent, right? Neil Marshall's. Yeah, it really movie, did. So got yeah. That, so, yeah. You know, we got to counter, counter chickens, true. cut our yeah. losses. The descent's an awesome movie. Yeah. Uh, B movie poster vault says, I can watch Dog Soldiers in a heartbeat. That's a good one. That's and good Zachary yeah. writes in and says, Dog Soldiers is the best. It is. It's I pretty agree. damn good. It's mm -hmm. pretty damn good. There you go. Yeah. 
So now we're going to do our final thoughts. We're going to review the movie. Who's up first? Colin! (laughs) What did you think about Pet Cemetery? You had to look. You had to look. You forgot what movie we were talking about. I was looking at it to see if there was a... uh, He was probably about to say dog soldiers because we were just talking about it. I looked at it to see if there was a a different way I could uh, pronounce cemetery since it's spelled weird, but I'm just like, eh, I can't do it, so... Cemetery? Cemetery? Pet cemetery. Pet (laughs) cemetery. Yeah, I can't. I couldn't do it. Couldn't figure it out. Um... Yeah, I mean, for all the holes I've been trying to poke in it tonight, which I think is like, you know, part of, you know, I mean, this part that's of the conversation. That's what we're supposed to do, yeah. Right? yeah. Like, hey. And they're legit holes. Yeah. They are. Uh, I legit do. Legit holes. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright 2017 <laughs> Saturday Night Freak Show. <laughs> There's a t-shirt. Legit holes. <laughs> uh, Continue. I do uh, really like this movie. Um, I think because it is, you know, I mean, when you're talking about, especially like, I mean, I guess it's not mainstream Hollywood horror if it's shot off in the boondocks by a small, you know, production company. It's more uh, distributed by Paramount, obviously, and yeah. paid for by them. So, I mean, I guess it's, you know. Mary Lambert doesn't scream mainstream. No. Yeah. Um, unless you're a, unless you're unless a you're diva. Madonna. Unless you're a diva from the 80s. <laughs> yeah. She's no Patty Jenkins or Catherine Bigelow is what you're saying. No, right. she's yeah. not. Yeah, but where's their where's Gatoroid on their uh, resume? <laughs> um, but Gatoroid, yeah, because that's why it's like you know. Sounds I think, like something you put cream on. I think <laughs> her, you know, as a as a director, Mary Lambert is she's like technically competent because she's able to basically make a movie based on the script that's in front of her. Yeah, but it doesn't seem like. And again, you're dealing with Stephen King, so I guess you know it's you know you're going to do whatever he writes down. But when yeah, you get how do you to, tell Stephen King no? When he's sitting right in front of you. Mm. Yeah. When he sells the movie rights for a dollar, that's when you say, I do what I want. Yeah, well, 10000 Apparently, That's what Chris he sold Carter, a Dreamcatcher for. But he sold dollar. Him, so, hey. <laughs> and Chris Carter from the X-Files rewrote him. You know, he turned in an episode that would have been like, it was 74 pages or something. They needed sure. shorter, so he rewrote it to make it fit. Damn. Yeah, I so would like, be like, what? I rewrote Stephen King. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> So it's like as a director, I don't think she's necessary. I mean, because we got Pet Cemetery too. So it's like it's very um, utilitarian. So it does kind of make you wonder what the George Romero version would have been like. But to her credit, you know, this movie has a lot of arresting moments in it where I think, you know, her reliance on. And maybe this is Stephen King's reliance on the, you know, turning the horror up to like a hundred works in its favor that you remember this movie. You know what? I'm going to take that back because the sound design has to be, you know, the the director's purview. Sound design's terrible. Uh, Gage comes back and he growls. Yeah. You know, and it's like if this would be creepy just watching this little hand coming out of the, you know, if it was silent. Mm-hmm. Him walking in, and you just see his feet coming in mm-hmm. would be great if it was silent. But they add the like, you know, mm-hmm. uh, the church is always kind of and having those fucking trucks go, you know, past the camera every five minutes. It's overkill. But I, again, I think that's part and parcel with the movie. It is cranked up mm-hmm. to 11. Um, but despite that, it works because the subject matter is so fucking dark. It is one of mm-hmm. the darkest subjects, I think, that you can make a, a film about. Uh, you know, I mean, the death of a child and then, you know, do we bring a kid back to, you know, back to life? I mean, it's just that is horrifying. And I think that's uh, that's why it kind of endures. And I went into this movie, at, you know, at 15 years old and I didn't know what it was about. I'd seen that cover of the, you know, the cats, you know hissing beneath the ground and i'm like oh it's a you know movie about creepy Creepy cats in a a cemetery had no idea was totally shocked when they killed that (laughs) chapter one dead children yeah (laughs) when the kid gets hit by that and it was just like i mean you're just you're it it does something you know like any fun you were really having with the movie kind of get sapped out of it at that moment. You're like, Jesus Christ, like this is pretty rough. Mm -hmm. And then it just keeps, but then I guess the movie doesn't know to like lay, lay back. It's like, okay, we got him. Like, you know, know, (laughs) it just has to keep like, you know, make sure it's horrifying. Put the the horror shit in there with the ghosts and the, you know, ease down. (laughs) Yeah. There was a slow-mo bloody shoe. Mm Mm-hmm. 
But I, I I leave that at the, the, the overkill factor is also, I think like part of uh, the writing it's Stephen King. Mm -hmm. And so he, I think is to blame partially for this. I think it would take somebody to re, you know, basically come and adapt it, strip a lot of things out, just make this really creepy uh, horror movie out of it, which I think he could do. But again, I'm not advocating a remake because I think this movie, it exists in that sweet spot where it works. And a lot of that, I think, it has a great horror movie score uh, by Elliot Goldenthal. A lot of, like, really tragic, sad, uh, you know, piano themes and all that playing through it. It's very, the whole movie is just melancholy. Mm -hmm. And I think that it aids it quite a bit. So, I mean, yeah, I love this movie. Uh, warts and all, basically. I love the performances, but especially Fred Gwynn is, you know, He's, oh, God. yeah, he's a treasure. He yeah. is. Uh, yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. He's perfect. He's the perfect Judd. You know, I mean, just that name, Judd and Fred, you're like, that's the guy. He's the neighbor you want lo looking out for you. Oh, yeah. Right. I wish he was my neighbor. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you go over and sit on the porch and have a beer with him. Yep. I mean, mm -hmm. Judd's up all hours of the day and night. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's thumbs up. Pet Cemetery recommended. Michaela, what did you think? So Stephen King adaptations are very hit or miss and a lot. And I mean, I know there are a lot of different directors and budgets and, um, you know, formats behind how they are adapted. Sometimes it's a TV series. Sometimes it's a full length movie. And sometimes the director takes liberties and they become a different thing. If I'm going to make my Stephen King masterpiece theater, uh, my first place is going to be The Shining for sure. And I know that might not count because it's completely different from the book. But um, I still think it's one of the best movies ever made. Uh, but I would say Pet Cemetery and Carrie are battling it out for number two. Like mm -hmm. th these, those two are just like really stick in my mind as good Stephen King adaptations. Um, whether or not they are honest to the book, that's not really what I'm looking at. I'm looking at is like, do they translate on screen as a good movie? Um, whereas you know, I think of Maximum Overdrive and Dreamcatcher as being really bad. Stephen King movies that I never want to see again. Whereas Pet Cemetery, you know, Sean and I had a similar experience of like seeing this multiple times, multiple times as a yes. child, uh, unsupervised <laughs> and just yes. like, yeah, no, like all those scenes with Zelda stick out in my mind. This was something that was constantly on cable that I saw a lot as a kid. And I don't know why I did, but I always did. Um, and so I, I, I always liked it, but I always enjoyed it. I was always glued to the screen when it was on. <laughs> I want to ask my parents if it's like, where were you guys? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Where, where, like, why was I allowed so to watch memories. this? I'm like, where were you? Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, I asked my parents that not too long ago because I was bringing yeah. up movies that I watched a lot, and my dad's like, like what movies? I'm like, when I was four, my favorite movie was Caddyshack. Are you kidding me? And he goes, what's wrong with Caddyshack? Right. It was like, yeah. there you go. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Ten. What were you guys doing? <laughs> that and explains everything. That like, explains it. <laughs> Fucking yeah, we were upstairs. You need to yeah. watch a movie. What are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of it is just being a latchkey kid. You're kind of left on your own yeah. to like kind of you know fend for yourself. And they, they a lot of times your parents will trust you to like know what you shouldn't be watching. Yeah. Like, but when you're a kid, you're like fuck that. I'm gonna watch what I want to watch. Parents should know better. I yeah. do what I want. Always yeah. have. Well, I mean, I, this is from the family. Also, showed me Phantasm when I was six years old. That's so true. you know, your dad's insane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a question. Mm -hmm. Did any of you have nightmares uh, from watching movies? Oh, I, yeah. yeah. Did you, <laughs> like, did your parents have to comfort you for oh, yeah. nightmares? I had, listen to our Predator yeah. 2 episode to That's hear my whole story <laughs> about it. I, yeah, I, have a, I had a reoccurring nightmare that I still remember because it was so bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm, I have to, I'm going to have to ask my parents. I, I don't remember, and I know that doesn't mean anything as far as mm -hmm. remembering stuff when you were a kid. I don't remember ever watching something and then having specific nightmares about it and having to be comforted by it. Oh. I don't, See, I don't remember well, them comforting yeah, me, but I remember having <laughs> nightmares. It was, you know, because I don't know if I told them. You know, I mean, it was just like I had. Not, they, they never dealt with it on your own. Yeah, there were things that I saw that disturbed me. I remember it, and it was they were mostly like these TV movies from like the seventies and eighties. Like Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Yeah. <laughs> but I digress. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Are you, are you taking notes for your for your future child problems? How you should deal well, with I mean, them? He can't watch Spider Man without having fucking a meltdown. So and he's obviously not watching horror movies for a long time. Doc Ock's death was traumatizing. It's traumatizing. <laughs> he sacrificed himself. Oh my god. But uh, so Pet Cemetery. Um, the thing I really like about this movie is that like. As opposed to other Stephen King stuff, we talked about a little bit before, but like it starts off very grounded and like just like someone you love is tragically killed in an accident. And like that, 
to me is like a really upsetting thing. It's something I've experienced. So like to me, I'm like, oh God, do I really want to watch this? But then I remember where the rest of the movie goes and I'm like, the payoff is worth it. It's interesting and it takes a different turn beyond this. But I think it's interesting for someone who has like so much writing couched in like supernatural events and elements and characters to like write a story based on something so real to all of us um and i think that's what makes pet cemetery different from a lot of his other stories so i definitely think it's worth a watch i think it's a good movie it's definitely got plot holes and it's got problems but it's execution is really well done and i think it really holds up over time like i was like i have not seen it in a blu-ray format until tonight and i was like wow this still looks really good like i said i've seen it on tv a million times that's how i've seen Mm -hmm. it so like seeing it in blu-ray i was like man it looks great it still looks good yeah and like the, the the effects look good you know i wish the score was a little more punchy i wish it was you know a little more emphasized on the key moments but that's a minor complaint i would definitely recommend it sean what do you think Oh, Pet Cemetery. It's uh like I said before, it's it's a gray afternoon right after school where you're just sitting around mm-hmm. watching nobody else is around, just sitting around watching a movie and just being depressed as a ten year old apparently. Um <laughs> But I mean that's uh, kinda what this movie will always be to me. Um I, I it's still watching it today. Like I mean like I said, I watched this a lot as a kid and so I remember a lot of it, but that imagery that we that you see in it is still um it's still very vivid and it still like does something to me because they do a lot um they do a lot right in this movie. We talked about the holes with maybe like you know, the script wise and why characters kind of do what they do um, and how there's a few problems with that. But as far as like imagery in this movie, it's still shit that's disturbing to me and it's unsettling. And, you know, us, uh, kids getting hit by semis, uh, uh, sisters held in back rooms um, who are just haunting, you know, people as they get older, just, dead children coming back with scalpels like the just the imagery in this movie even the, like the evil cats like at this point in my life that's just something that bothers me now but just the imagery of this movie i think just gets it so right and like they do at a certain point just turn the knob up to uh all the way for this as far as like we're, we're going horror and we're going all the way um I mean, I appreciate that in this movie. Like, you know, like we said, it's got its problems and there's a few things wrong with it, but it's still something. It's just like, oh, like we said, it gives you that reaction, that reaction right in the bottom of the spine. We're just like, ah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's still, uh, I think it's still like a relevant movie. Like, I don't, you can remake this movie, sure, but I don't, I, I can't imagine to me, it would be as effective as some of the stuff they do in this movie. Um, it still works on me today. Um, I definitely recommend Pet Cemetery. I think uh, I'll watch this. I'll definitely watch this again. Um, it's one of his better adaptations. Uh, I will go back and read this book. I'll tell you that. That's that might be my next Stephen King movie. So uh, yeah, I recommend Pet Cemetery. If they remake this, they're not going to get a better kid actor than Miko. I, I don't think like, so. Like it's going to be that yeah, kid it crushed. Feels like it's it. all going to be too slick. And too like, would they even try to remake and this now? Everyone's gonna be beautiful, yeah. and it's just. Uh, but like with well, the with the well, kids stuff, I can't even see them remaking. I, 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 with with uh, the impending success of what I assume will be successful with it, it wouldn't surprise me if they remade it. Yeah, there's the big Stephen King is coming back. They've been talking about it. Mm-hmm. One Julio, or the guy who did Twenty Eight Weeks Later, was oh, attached. Yeah. Like as of like last year. So oh yeah. really? <clears throat> Interesting. And before you, I'm going to amend my review. Feel free. I think I, I didn't give uh, Mary Lambert enough credit because the suspense and the way that she shoots yeah. the, you know, the approach of the dead characters, like that does take skill, I think. And yeah. like where that came from in her head, mm-hmm. I'm like, that is actually like really good, effective uh, direction. So mm-hmm. I take back what I said about it earlier. <laughs> Okay. Hey, hey, she Halloween 2 Calabar's Revenge is a great movie. <laughs> it was the Monster Squad for my generation. Which one? So, Halloween, Halloween 2, Town 2. Halloween Town 2 Calabar's yeah. Revenge, yeah. Oh, that was hers? Yeah, she directed that. Whoa. Halloween yeah. Town 2. Shut up, Colin. Yeah. You stop. Come on. You stop now. You don't do that. I'm, I'm backing away from the microphone. <laughs> Holly, what did you think uh, of Pet Cemetery, the film that you brought? That the was the film that I brought. This was my right. movie tonight. Um, uh, this was the second installment of my series of Undead. Uh, we started with Dead Alive or Brain Dead, and I wanted to go. I wanted to show a different 
perspective of um, of the undead, if you will. Um, and I think Pet Cemetery really does that. I, I think that it's an excellent portrayal of, like we've talked about, human emotion. Like that's that's one of the most terrifying parts of this movie is that it really plays on serious human emotion with both sadness and mourning, and then with the things that happen, the way that they are completely uncomfortable for the viewer to watch. It's things that it's just. Little, I mean, you know, you can you can watch movies where people get stabbed, people get whatever that happens, but just to see the the scalpel on the heel and on the face, and it's just it's so unsettling and uncomfortable. Digs in there about two yeah, inches it, too. It's it just digs like, in there oh, like so, so, so gooey and uh, jelly. Oh god. oh god, it just it just gets you in 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 these in these situations that it's it's just horrifying <laughs> to to think about. It's like they they take you to this place that everyone fears. You with, know it's a good movie, yeah. uh, depending on how the sounds your audience makes. Yeah, As we've been doing true. tonight, it's going to be like, ah! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it takes you to this really awful place with every human has a complexity about death. Whether they fear it or they fear someone else dying, it's just this raw human emotion that once you hit that subject... It just takes the movie to a whole new place. So, and I and I love that. That's how the movie sets you up. It touches on so many things later on, but it, the fact that it brings you there first, I think, is really what sets up this movie to be something special. It's just it gets you. It just gets you in this in this complete um, environment. Like you you can watch a movie and you're very aware that you're watching a movie, but this like you you feel like you're you're in it. You know, you're in this in this mode. Um, so I really appreciate that. And I I was not disappointed at all. I did not remember this movie very much. I, I knew the story. I knew everything that happened just because it's such a well-known movie. And there's just things that you remember about it. Um, but the overall movie, I didn't remember enough of it um, to really expect what was happening. I, I, I remembered Zelda. That was horrifying. <laughs> But the other the other things, it was fresh enough to me that it felt like a first watch. And I was not disappointed at all. I thought it was fantastic. I think for a first movie, Mary Lambert did an excellent job. Um, lots of holes, like we said. But she really she really got what she wanted across. And I don't think there was any I don't think there was any mis like misrepresentation of what she wanted the movie to feel like. I think there's so many times that the director can go off the rails when they're inexperienced like that, but I think she nailed it. And it was just, it's such, it's such a great movie. I think it's, I think it's one of my favorite Stephen King movies for sure. Um, I agree with Michaela, The Shining, Carrie, always been two of my favorites. I think this is now up there with those two. Um, Yeah, I really don't have anything to to say about it because we've already hit the, hit the points. What's, what's not great, what's great. I definitely recommend this movie for sure. Um, yeah, and I, I have no desire to watch the sequel. Thank you, Sean. No, 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 no. <laughs> you'll be disappointed. Yeah, but definitely recommend Pet Cemetery for sure. All right, well, that's Pet Cemetery on Saturday Night Freak Show. Sean's going to go read. How old is this book? book, Colin? This book seems old. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, it's got the original cover on it, so that's when it yeah, came from true. hardcover. It went to that. Uh, you'd have to look at the problem. I don't know. What 83. 83. Like, what? Yeah, 83. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Which I'm assuming you owned it since then. <laughs> yeah, I did cheap. not buy it in. I bought that after I saw the movie. Oh, okay. So I bought that in the 90s. But it's from 1983. Yeah. Hmm. So I went this week because I traded with Sean. That's right. And I'm really excited about Sean's pick. Sean, what are we watching next week? We're, we're, we're going to watch... A movie. We're gonna watch a couple movies, actually. We're gonna go on a freak show field, field trip. trip. Freak show field trip. Field it's trip. a trip. It's a double fun freak show episode. You may know, uh, dear reader, dear listener, <laughs> dear Brailler, dear Brailler, <laughs> that there is a certain movie coming out next week. Next week? Yeah, they, it came out. It came yesterday. out yesterday. It came out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For people listening, yes. <laughs> the timeline is confusing. <laughs> uh, but we will be watching Pennywise the Dancing Clown in it, and also in it. What? Uh, what? What? We're gonna be watching the new It movie, and then we'll also be watching the first part of the 1990s miniseries It. Yay. So we kind of got a double feature going on here. Mm-hmm. So we'll be 
looking at all of that. Tim Curry versus Bill Skarsgård. Basically, yes. And a little look at the book as well for us who have read it, listened to it, been exposed to it. So wow. next it's week, all it it's all, all it all the time. <laughs> the fuck? Siri, calm down. <laughs> and we might have some exciting opportunities for our listeners, too. Oh shit. So yeah. stay tuned. Yes. Oh, shit, exciting. listeners. All right. So that's, well, now I can't wait to find out what this is next week <laughs> on the Saturday Night Freak Show. I hope you can either. And so it's going to be special. Then, it's going to be double fun. Until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs>